Welcome to our lab. Here you will find summaries of books and articles from around the world. Start. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share with you an amazing secret hidden in depression and food. So without further ado, here's what we have for you today. The content of the first period is an introduction to the surprising secrets behind depression and diet. In this section we will discuss the importance of consuming fish and mushrooms to prevent depression and rejuvenate your body and mind. The information is very important and we hope you will stay with us to the end. Let's begin the first section, the surprising secrets behind depression and diet, with an explanation of the following. Is it possible that you are currently suffering from depression or have someone close to you who is suffering from mental health problems? In fact, depression is a very familiar disease and one in four people may suffer from it. However, many people hide their depression and its presence may not be readily apparent to those around them. The potential for depression is there for everyone. The number of people suffering from depression is increasing every year, with an estimated 300 million people worldwide suffering from depression. Today I will focus on the relationship between depression and diet. In recent years, it has become clear that there is a deep connection between depression and diet. It is believed that depression is increasing due to our modern dietary environment. We hope that re-evaluating our dietary environment will help us to improve our mental health and build a happier everyday life. Let's begin with a detailed description. The first one, the surprising secret behind depression and diet, is a story about the impact of sunscreen created by excessive whitening progress. Let me explain the relationship between sunscreen and diet. Do you use sunscreen on a daily basis? In recent years, the use of sunscreen has been encouraged to prevent skin aging and dark skin. Many people probably apply sunscreen when they go outside. Sunscreens are useful products to protect the skin from UV rays and are a means of preventing UV-induced aging. However, in recent years, an increasing number of people have been using sunscreen to excess, and as a result, there is concern about a deficiency of certain vitamins. That specific vitamin is vitamin D. Vitamin D is a vitamin produced by the body through whole body exposure to sunlight and plays an important role in brain health by producing motivational substances such as dopamine and noradrenaline. Vitamin D also promotes cell growth in the brain and protects nerve cells in the brain from oxidative stress. Applying sunscreen blocks UV rays and prevents the body from producing vitamin D as a result, the body may be deficient in vitamin D, which is essential for brain health and may increase the risk of depression. In fact, numerous studies have shown that low vitamin D levels increase the risk of depression. Therefore, it is important to produce vitamin D through sunbathing to compensate for vitamin D deficiency. 20 to 30 minutes of full body sun exposure is sufficient. However, if going outside is difficult or you do not want to be exposed to ultraviolet radiation, you can supplement vitamin D through diet. Consuming foods that contain vitamin D can help to compensate for vitamin D deficiency. To help you maintain a healthy brain and heart, we have shared some important information about vitamin D. Two foods that are particularly rich in vitamin D are fish and mushrooms. While people generally think of vegetables and fruits as being rich in vitamins, this is not as true as one might expect when it comes to vitamin D. People today tend to move away from Japanese food and consume junk food and sweet snacks more often. This is a dietary change that can cause depression, and simply returning to Japanese food can restore one's mood. There are also many people who do not suffer from depression, but feel depressed and unmotivated due to poor mental health. People suffering from these symptoms should consider reviewing their diet. Because diet and mental health are closely linked, it is important to review your diet first if you want to improve your mental health. Dietary supplementation with vitamin D is especially useful in winter. Winter is a season of short daylight hours and low UV radiation, making vitamin D production from sun exposure more difficult in some areas. Winter is also the season when the incidence of depression increases and the number of suicides rises. To get through this harsh winter, it is recommended to consume a good amount of vitamin D from meals, such as one-pot meals with fish and mushrooms as the main ingredients. Next, let's look at the second topic, the surprising secret behind depression and diet. Now, do you know the characteristics of people who suffer from depression? Various environmental factors may come to mind, such as people who are under stress or being bullied. Certainly, these are some of the causes of depression, but there are more causes of depression that we need to know about. That is whether or not we like sweets, or in other words, whether or not we consume excessive amounts of sugar. It is no surprise that excessive sugar intake makes the body gain weight. You probably already know that sugar causes diabetes, but of all nutrients, it is also the one that has the strongest effect on obesity. In other words, it is the most fattening nutrient. And as will be explained in more detail later, it has been shown that obese people are actually more likely to suffer from depression. It has also been shown that excessive intake of carbohydrates raises blood glucose levels and causes a phenomenon called equivalence in the body. Sunburn, let's say, is the scorching of the body, 
a phenomenon that causes aging, and when this occurs in the brain, it is said to increase the risk of depression. Fructose, the so-called added sugar, which is found in sugar and fruits, is especially important to be aware of. When fructose is altered in the body, a substance called aegis is produced. This substance, called the final glycation product, causes inflammation in the body and brain and increases the risk of depression. In fact, studies have shown that high fructose intake increases the risk of developing depression. Furthermore, excessive carbohydrate intake can also have a negative impact on the intestinal environment. Currently, the substances that are attracting the most attention in the intestinal environment are called short-chain fatty acids, which are good for the body and are produced by intestinal bacteria. These short-chain fatty acids perform a variety of functions that keep our bodies healthy. However, it has been shown that when we consume excessive amounts of carbohydrates, our intestinal bacteria stop producing short-chain fatty acids. This is a really big problem. It has been shown that there is a deep connection between this reduced production of short-chain fatty acids and depression, which also results in depression. So, what do you think? So many different phenomena can be caused by excessive sugar intake, and they can certainly wreak havoc on your body and your brain. What is even more frightening is that depression causes you to lose interest in food and to want to eat one high-fat, sugary food after another, no matter what it is. As a result, you end up eating sweets, bread, ramen noodles, and other foods full of sugar and fat that are bad for you, making your symptoms even worse. In this way, sugar is a major culprit for our bodies and brains. But even so, modern people inevitably continue to eat carbohydrates. Thus, even if we insist over and over again about the absence of sugar, we pretend it did not work and continue to eat sugar. Or they try to come up with excuses to eat sweets, such as, chocolate is good for you because it's healthy, or, fruit is good for you because it's good for you. Why on earth does the human race crave sweets so much? It has to do with the addictive nature of sugar. When we eat something sweet, we feel like our hearts are full, right? This is because when we take sugar, our brain releases a substance called dopamine, which makes us feel happy. That is why we want to eat something sweet when we are sad or tired. Today, we live in an era of stress, and the temptation for dopamine is so strong that we cannot escape it. The modern world is infested with foods that are overloaded with sugar, foods that do not belong on this earth. People in the past did not have easy access to sweet foods like we do. In the olden days, such as the Jomon period, sugar and sweets did not exist, of course, and sweet foods were not as sweet as modern fruits, although there was some fruit. Of course, this does not mean that there was no sweetness at all. In addition to fruits, there were sweet potatoes, taro, and sugarcane, and so on. But the human race was built while taking in such natural sweetness. In the modern age, however, there is suddenly an overabundance of excessively sweet foods. This has only happened in the past 100 years, and if you think back 50 years, you will see that even in the mid-Showa period, sweets were not as easy to eat as they are today, and the fruits available were not as sweet as they are today. In other words, it is only in the last 230 years that we have become a society filled with sweet foods. There is no way that the human body can keep up with this rapid change. Naturally, it has malfunctions in various areas, which leads to the lifestyle-related diseases and depression of today. However, the reason we cannot stop eating sweets even after our bodies and minds have been destroyed to such an extent is that the temptation of dopamine is so strong. Once we eat sugar, the temptation of sweetness is so strong that we cannot quit. It is said that it was the, give me chocolate, policy of the post-war GHQ that taught the Japanese this powerful impression. This is a famous episode in which GHQ loaded truckloads of chocolates and distributed them to children after the war. At first glance, give me chocolate, which seems like a wonderful episode, made Japanese people learn the taste of sugar and triggered their sugar addiction. Since then, a variety of sweet foods have become available in the Japanese market, and even fruits have been improved to sweeter varieties. But now we must confront our brains with this brainwashing. These sweet and tasty foods are poisoning your body and brain. The temptation of dopamine from sugar is certainly intense, but it has been shown that the human sense of taste changes after about a month, and if you continue to live a life of quitting sweet foods for about a month, the desire for sweets will gradually soften. As with anything, it is natural that the first time you quit is hard. But by getting over that point, your body and your mind will change drastically. I encourage you to start today, and start cutting out the sugar and the sweet. As an additional note, chocolate with a strong sweet taste is not acceptable, but high cocoa chocolate and dark chocolate with a high cocoa oil content are recommended due to their various health benefits. However, many dark chocolates contain only 40% to 50% oil content of cacao, and these chocolates contain a lot of sugar and should not be eaten. If you choose chocolates with at least 70% cacao oil content, preferably 80% or more, you will get the full health benefits of cacao, so please be sure to choose delicious and healthy chocolates.
Next, I would like to introduce one of the most surprising secrets behind depression and diet, the relationship between inflammation and the brain and junk food. Junk food is a very unhealthy food that combines large amounts of sugar and poor quality oil and is believed to cause inflammation everywhere in the body. In particular, this inflammation is called chronic inflammation because it lasts for a long period of time, and in recent years it has become the focus of much attention as a cause of aging. And there is a relationship between this and depression called the inflammation hypothesis. The inflammation hypothesis explains how when mild inflammation occurs in the body, substances called inflammatory cytokines are released into the bloodstream, spreading inflammation to other parts of the body. Since the brain consumes 20% of the body's blood, large amounts of these inflammatory cytokines can also be taken up, resulting in inflammation in the brain. It is believed that inflammation in the brain may cause symptoms of depression. In fact, it has been suggested that inflammation occurs in the brains of depressed patients. Some data suggest that people who consume junk food and have chronic inflammation in their bodies are more likely to feel depressed. Thus, if you have been feeling down and negative lately, it may be due to inflammation in your body rather than an inherent personality problem. Avoiding junk food and eating a healthy diet can help reduce inflammation, which may alleviate some of your previous problems. Furthermore, obesity and inflammation are closely linked, as obese people are more prone to chronic inflammation. Studies have shown that obese people are at increased risk for depression, and conversely, depressed patients are at increased risk for obesity. The relationship between stress and diet is also important because chronic inflammation caused by obesity may contribute to depression and, in addition, stress increases the release of hormones that increase appetite and food intake. Thus, it is understood that a healthy diet has a significant impact not only on the body but also on the mind. In particular, many people in today's society suffer from mental health problems, and it has been suggested that diet can help improve these problems. Therefore, it is important to be careful in our food choices, to cope with stress, and to eat a healthy diet. So let's summarize the content of the first section here. Point 1. Excessive sunscreen use in modern society has increased vitamin D deficiency, and this deficiency has been shown to increase the risk of depression by a factor of 1.3. A good way to supplement vitamin D is to get it from sun exposure and from the diet. When getting it from the diet, fish and mushrooms are recommended. Point 2. Excessive sugar intake can promote inflammation and aging in the body and interfere with the production of short-chain fatty acids by gut bacteria, both of which are associated with depression. Avoid sugar intake other than naturally sweetened, and pay attention to a well-balanced diet. Point 3. Since the inflammation hypothesis in the brain exists as one of the causes of depression and junk food is a factor that increases inflammation in the body, caution should be exercised in its consumption. As a supplement to the use of sunscreen, it is advised to refrain from using sunscreen for 20 to 30 minutes of sun exposure, and to use sunscreen for longer periods of time, taking into account the negative effects of UV rays. Now, in the first period, we have looked at the surprising relationship between depression and diet and between mental health and diet. In the following two periods, we will discuss specifically the best foods that can improve mental health. First of all, let me conclude that the best food that can make our mental health and even our body younger is chili peppers. Of course, if you don't like spicy food, you don't have to eat chili peppers, but chili peppers are actually the best food with crazy excellent health benefits. That's why we hope that today's video will help you understand the amazing health benefits of chili peppers and incorporate them into your daily diet. Chili peppers are a common seasoning that can be easily incorporated into your daily diet. Therefore, it is an easy ingredient to consume daily, even if you are a pain in the ass. In addition to its use as a seasoning, chili peppers have an extremely potent anti-inflammatory effect. In fact, a large, recent study of 500,000 people found that those who consumed chili peppers and other spicy foods on a daily basis had an astounding 14% lower risk of death than those who did not eat spicy foods. This 14% reduction in mortality risk is a very large number, and one that you don't see very often. Furthermore, this study also shows that spicy foods, including chili peppers, significantly reduce the risk of serious illnesses such as cancer and heart disease. In another study, a survey of 16,000 Americans found that the mortality rate for those who consumed chili peppers on a daily basis was 12% lower than for those who did not eat chili peppers. In short, what these studies show is the startling fact that eating chili peppers on a regular basis reduces fat risk by more than 10%. We will now discuss how chili peppers reduce our risk of death and how they can keep us away from serious diseases such as cancer and heart disease. Chili peppers are one of the most intensely spicy spices, but it is actually this intense spiciness that hides the health benefits of chili peppers. In fact, capsaicin, the spicy component of chili peppers, is the best nutrient to prevent various diseases and prolong life. There are so many different health benefits of nucleotides, but the one that is absolutely essential for extending our lifespan is the high inflammatory effect. 
As explained in the first paragraph, this inflammation not only causes us to age, but it is also the cause of various diseases, such as depression when inflammation occurs in the brain. Capsaicin, the pungent ingredient in chili peppers, has a wonderful effect in preventing this inflammation. Let us briefly discuss how capsaicin prevents inflammation. When we consume spicy foods, we experience a temporary strong stimulation. This is what many people experience when they eat spicy food. The mouth becomes hot, painful, and intensely stimulated. This spicy stimulus is temporarily very unpleasant. However, many people choose to eat this uncomfortable spicy food. The reason for this is that after this intense stimulation, the sensitivity of the sensory nerves is known to decrease. As a result, after consuming spicy food, we feel the flavor contained in the spicy component and find it tasty. Important to the inflammatory effect in this context is the fact that the sensitivity of the sensory nerves is reduced. A spicy hot stimulus is a stimulus that causes inflammation, similar to the stimulus of an actual physical beating. However, the inflammation caused by the ingestion of spicy foods is not intense enough to actually damage the body. This is called a false inflammatory response. In other words, the inflammation is not intense enough to actually damage the body. However, the body misinterprets this stimulation as intense inflammation. In order to relieve the inflammation, inflammatory substances are secreted throughout the body. This is the true nature of the high inflammatory effect of nuclear fiber. Furthermore, capsaicin is known to affect the function of immune cells. Immune cells secrete substances called inflammatory cytokines to protect the body, and it is known that an excess of these substances causes an inflammatory response. Capsaicin suppresses the secretion of inflammatory cytokines and reduces inflammation in the body. This is a very nice high inflammatory effect, both in creating a false inflammatory response and switching the body into a high inflammatory mode, and in suppressing immune immune cells and preventing excessive inflammation. Adding just a few capsaicin containing chili peppers to your daily diet will quickly bring down the inflammation in your body. Not only does this reduce brain inflammation and depression, but it also contributes to overall anti-aging and longevity. Capsaicin not only helps the body to lose weight, but also improves blood flow. Imagine how eating spicy food makes your body feel warm and fluffy. You would intuitively understand that spicy food increases metabolism and improves blood flow. This is thought to be due to the fact that ingesting the spicy ingredient capsaicin stimulates the production of brown fat cells. Brown fat cells, unlike normal fat, are fat that works to use energy. Therefore, brown fat cells are generally considered good fat and increase metabolism and energy expenditure. In addition, consuming capsaicin helps raise body temperature. When we eat spicy food, our body enters a state of combat, blood vessels dilate, and warm blood flow circulates throughout the body. Therefore, capsaicin intake also helps to improve cold joints. Coldness occurs when blood is unable to reach the tissues at the ends of the body. This is a condition in which the tips of the body are cold and oxygen and nutrients do not reach the terminal tissues. With insufficient blood flow, oxygen and nutrients are not properly supplied to cells throughout the body and waste products are not eliminated, resulting in starvation of cells throughout the body and the aging process. For these reasons, those suffering from cold sores should consider taking capsaicin actively. Capsaicin dilates blood vessels, allowing blood to flow properly to the ends of the limbs, which not only prevents cold, but also ensures that oxygen and nutrients are delivered to all cells throughout the body, making them healthier from the cellular level. In addition, this effect of improved blood flow also has a positive effect on the brain. The brain is an organ that uses 20% of the blood circulating throughout the body, and improved blood flow will ensure that oxygen and nutrients are properly supplied to the brain, thereby improving brain function. Waste products that accumulate in the brain can cause dementia, but improved blood flow effectively eliminates these waste products as well. Thus, it contributes to keeping away from dementia as well as depression. Now that we have looked at the wonderful health benefits of chili peppers, there is one caveat. You should definitely avoid overeating them. This is true for all foods, not just chili peppers. No matter how great the health benefits of a food, too much of it can be harmful. For example, it has been pointed out that chili peppers, due to their intense stimulation, can damage the digestive system and cause digestive cancers. In moderate amounts, chili peppers can reduce the risk of cancer, but in excess, they can actually make you more susceptible to cancer. Therefore, it is important to enjoy spiciness only in moderation, and it is safe to avoid foods that are extremely hot. Summary of two points, one. Point one, daily consumption of chili peppers significantly lowers fat risk. This effect has been demonstrated in a large study, and capsaicin, a high inflammatory agent found in chili peppers, is thought to be the main reason for the reduced risk of fat. Point two, capsaicin has the effect of switching the body into a high inflammatory mode by creating false inflammation, 
and also regulates immune cell function to prevent excessive inflammation. Point 3. Capsaicin also increases the number of brown fat cells, which helps burn fat, and improves blood flow, which helps distribute nutrients to cells throughout the body. These are the contents of the two sessions. If you found the video useful, please click the high rating button and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching today. Thanks for watching, see you again.